Have you ever written a multi-threaded code that seems totally correct, but when you're not looking at it or only in production or only sometimes it failed and you don't know why? Then you felt the effect of weak memory consistency. Let's find out how you can resolve it. Today we are talking about how the CPU reordering your code behind your back without you knowing it and how memory writes are coming in the order that you don't expect and why sometimes a thread tries to read a memory but gets a wrong value. We will also talk about memory barriers or fences which are the tools we use to take control all of this. Welcome back to what every programmer should know about the memory. Today we are stepping into the vault which can make and break your code when you are coding in the multi-threaded fashion or you can call it memory consistency. Let's start with something that we always take it for granted, that codes will be always executed in the way that you write it. But modern CPUs do not guarantee that. In fact, they go out of their way to execute things out of the order in order to improve the performance. Suppose you have two variables x and y, which are shared between two threads. Thread 1 writes x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. Thread 2 however reads y then reads x. Logically it feels like if thread 2 sees y is equal to 1, then it must see also x equal to 1. But in reality that's not guaranteed. Why? Because most CPUs reordering instructions at runtime. Not the logical instructions, those stay in place in your code, but the actual execution and the visibility of memory rise to the other cores. The CPU might delay the store to x, or it might let the thread 2 to read y from the CPU cache before x is even committed and that breaks your expectation of the reorder. This reordering happens for performance. It helps the CPU to fill the pipeline bubbles, reduce the stalls and execute more instructions per clock. It's great for speed but it is dangerous for the shared memory or data races. So even if your code is perfectly ordered, the hardware might see a different story. And that is the root of memory consistency issues. Different CPUs have different rules about what order memory operations must appear to follow. These rules are called memory consistency model. For example, x86 processors like Intel and AMD, they follow a model called total store order or TSO. It guarantees that writes from a single thread appear in order to all other threads. So if a thread does x equal to 1 and then y equal to 2, other thread will always see that x is written before y. But on ARM or power architectures, which are used heavily in mobile and high performance servers, the rules are weaker. The CPUs allow much more aggressive reordering. They might let the stores appear out of the order to the observers. They might also let the reads and writes be interleaved in surprising ways. And this means the same C++ or Java code can behave differently in different hardware. Even compilers play a role. The optimizer might reorder the instructions as long as it doesn't break the single threaded correctness. But in a multi threaded world, that can be dangerous. That's why language memory models like C11 memory model or Java memory model exist. They define what ordering guarantees the language gives you, but they also expect you to use the right synchronization tools to enforce those guarantees. Which brings us to the next topic, fences and memory barriers. A memory barrier, or also can be called fence, is a special instruction that tells CPU to stop reordering certain memory operations across that point. Think of it like you're putting a wall between two operations and saying what happens before this wall must finish completely before anything can start after that. That is the full fence. There are also load fences which block the reordering of reads and store fences which block the reordering of writes. Some architectures offer even finer grain control, but in essence, you are telling the hardware to stay in line. Let's say you are building a producer consumer queue. The producer writes some data into the buffer and then sets the ready flag to the true. The consumer watches that flag and when it sees it is true, then it reads the data. Without a memory barrier, it's possible for the CPU to reorder the writes, to set the flag to true even before the data can be stored in that area. The consumer sees the flag, reads uninitialized garbage, and your program crashes. To fix that, you add a store to a store fence, or full memory fence, between writing the data and setting the flag. This tells CPU, do not reorder these two stores. Data must be visible before the flag. On x86 CPUs, fences are strong by default. 
So these kind of things just works. But on ARM or Power, you have to explicitly write barriers or use synchronized primitives like STD Atomic with memory ordering flag like memory order release. If you are working with C++, the standard library gives you the tools like Atomic Thread Fence or even finer control with Memory Order Acquire and Memory Order Release. These apply fences and signal intent to the compiler as well. Memory barriers are your way of telling both the compiler and the CPU and do not mess with this sequence. They are not always needed, but when they are, they are the difference between subtle data corruption and rock solid code. Let me give you a real world example. There was once a bug in a multi-threaded logging system where log messages were written by one thread and read by another. Messages were being truncated, sometimes just timestamps. Sometimes the entire message was missing. The cause? A missing memory fence. The producer thread was writing into the log, then setting a pointer to that log in a shared queue. But without a memory barrier, the CPU sometimes reordered the writes to the pointer of that log before the data was actually committed. So the consumer thread picked up half written log. Not a crash, not a segmentation fault, just silent data corruption. The kind that is hardest to catch. And these bugs do not show up in the unit test. They happen once in a million runs. They happen under the load and they will happen in the production. That is why it's critical to understand the memory barriers and memory consistency. You cannot just hope for the sequential execution. You have to design for it. Use atomics when needed. Use mutexes for safety. Insert fences when crossing threads without locks. And understand how your target architecture works. It's hard, but it's worth Memory consistency is one of the most important and most dangerous concepts in concurrent programming. It is the reason why perfectly written codes sometimes fail in the production. It is the reason why one flag in the compiler, one hardware change, or one refactor causes subtle devastating bugs. Modern CPUs are fast because they're aggressive. They are out of the order machines with deep pipelines, a speculative execution and multiple layers of caches, but that power comes with the complexity. If you want performance and correctness in concurrent systems, you have to respect memory consistency. In the next episode, we are going to dive deeper into the cache level issues with false sharing and cache line alignment. Why two completely separate variables can fight over the same cache space and ruin your multi-threaded scaling. If you have enjoyed this topic, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to get notified for the next videos and let me know in the comment what your worst multi-threading bug was until the next video good morning good afternoon good evening bye